Martins are waiting. Thank you. Dr. Jacobson? Hmm? This is a semen sample? Of course, from today's donor. Today's? I didn't see anyone. And you won't. In this practice, I'm the only one who deals with the donors. Yes, sir. I realize you're new here, but you must realize that my patients are guaranteed anonymity, and that's what they get. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's always difficult to talk about a medical discovery when one is a discoverer. Especially when you're as modest as I am. <laughs> Amniocentesis. Amnio, from the Greek amnion for call. Centesis, also from the Greek meaning to prick. The procedure was first developed in Europe by... What was his name? <laughs> but I like to think it was perfected in the United States by Jacobson. And it was, if I may say so myself, a godsend. Not just to those who wanted to know the sex of their unborn child, but more importantly to those whose children might be born with genetic defects that would render them incapable of development and often even of survival. Indeed, it was because of such concerns that I accepted President Ford's nomination to serve as a member of his Commission on Mental Retardation. And despite those who say that now, because we have ultrasound, there's no need for amniocentesis, I'm here to tell you they're wrong. In my fertility practice, both techniques are valuable tools to keep parents and doctor fully informed. Because, ladies and gentlemen, when I make a baby, I want it to be perfect. And believe me, so will your patients. And that's why they call me the baby maker. Come on. OK, OK, ready? Let's do the airplane. Here comes the airplane. No, he's not home yet. Me? I'm just flying some carrots into a little guy's mouth. <laughs> yes, I am. Huh? No, it's Nita's baby. Wait a second, wait a second. Ah, the hangar door is opening. Hang on one second. Yay, good boy! Good boy! So what's the news? No, I'm here. Congratulations. How far along? Did you tell Rose yet? I bet she's through. We're working on it. Listen, Bev, I gotta go. The baby's starting to get fussy. It's great news. I'll be sure and tell Greg. I love you, too. Bye. Look at me. Aren't I funny? You see the funny lady crying? Cause she can't have a cute little Eric like you. A cute little guy just like you. Hi. Hi there. I'm sorry, I'm late. Hi, honey. Hi. Mary, what's wrong? Greg's sister, Beverly, is pregnant. Again? What is that, number 47? I'm expecting a call from St. Rose any minute. When are you two gonna give me a grandbaby? You haven't forgotten how, have you? She said that. Not to me, to Greg. He didn't tell her about the vasectomy? Are you kidding? Then she'd know for sure she's not gonna have any grandkids. 
Not any of Greg's anyway, which as far as she's concerned is the same thing. There. No, I know what you're gonna say. What? Call my friend Sue. Well, why not? To just talk. Look, they say this doctor she's seeing is one of the best in Virginia. Throw away the number. I was afraid I'd be tempted. Well, here. That's all that's stopping you. Hey. Hi. Hi, Nina. What a surprise. <laughs> hey, little guy. Hey. I'm not, I, 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 I'm dirty. I'll uh, be in the shower. Call her. Bye. It's nice to finally meet you, Sue. I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, not at all. Any friend of Nita's. Sorry it has to be after work. With our schedules, we try to save the weekends. I hope you don't mind talking in the kitchen. Can I help? Sure. My weekly stew project. Make a big pot. Microwave bowls for dinner. Sue. Hi, honey. Oh, hi. Uh, oh, Bill, this is Mary Bennett. Oh. My husband. Hi. Uh, uh, nice hi. to meet you. I hope you don't think that I'm uh, impolite if I leave you two to talk. Calls. Uh, hope to see you again sometime. Bye. I know this must be hard for you. I remember the first time I tried to talk about it. <laughs> Seems so personal. Not something you discuss with strangers. Would it help if I just tell you what happened with us? Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, whenever you have any questions, just... Well, let's see. Um, first of all, I'm the one with the problem. I don't ovulate. The idea was to make sure I did, and then for Bill and I to have sex as often as possible right at that time, to increase the chance I'd get pregnant. <laughs> Poor Bill. We'd get up at 4.30 every morning to make love before we both had to go to work. Bill was developing a Pavlovian response to the alarm. <laughs> Good. Good. Sense of humor helps. What is that? Oh, uh, Bill! Sorry. Damn, this machine. Bill! Sorry, I thought the washer got fixed. <laughs> Do you want me to take a look at it? Oh, no, no, thanks. I'll take care of it. Wait a minute. You can fix things? Anything you can plug in? <laughs> oh. oh, I'm impressed. So, where were we? Um, sense of humor. Ah, yes. Sex on demand. <laughs> but that was B.J. Before Jacobson. Do you like him? Dr. J? Uh, actually, I can't say I'm all that excited about him personally. You seen him? No. <laughs> Prepare yourself. He's large and a bit overbearing. But he's good. You got pregnant? Almost instantly. He collected Bill's sperm and did the insemination himself to get the good stuff, as he put it, and it worked. But I lost the baby at 12 weeks. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not all bad. At least now I know I can get pregnant. And I'm going back to try again. See, statistically, the odds are against us. Only a tiny percentage of women using artificial insemination actually get pregnant and carry to term. Even with Dr. Jacobson? Uh, even with Dr. J. But his stats are a whole lot better than most. Oh, that's another thing. <laughs> He's modest. Calls himself the baby maker. I'm glad to see there are no boo-hoos. Perseverance, that's what it takes. We pick ourselves up and then we start all over again. Now then, today we'll give you your next HCG shot to stimulate ovulation and prepare your body and double check Bill's sperm count and motility. And tonight after the insemination, don't forget to have an orgasm. I'll do my best. Well, it will guarantee maximum effect. You can use the restroom down the hall.
Greg. Hmm? Don't get mad, okay? What? <laughs> what? Have you ever heard of artificial insemination? Heard of it? Sure, I've heard of it, but if you think no, I'm no, gonna... just wait, just listen. Nita's got this friend who went to this whoa, doctor. Whoa, 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 Nita? Nita knows about this? Terrific. Well, who am I supposed to talk to? <laughs> Me? I'm your husband. But you won't talk about it. Because there's nothing to say. See? Mayor, I want kids. But the doctor said you could end up with a hysterectomy if you got pregnant, that was miscarried, three years or you ago. might even die. Look, I'm sorry it happened the way it did, but it's over. It doesn't have to be. I can't believe you want some other guy. I don't want some other guy. It's not sexual, it's scientific. Test tubes. A turkey baster? No. This is a world class doctor. Everything's totally confidential. His donors are anonymous. No one would ever know the baby wasn't yours. Ours. Yeah, except a good doc and Nita and... No, God no one in our families. Not your mother. Honey. I see babies everywhere. I dream about them. It's like... I'm hungry. Like, my heart is just hungry all the time. All my life, I've seen myself with a baby in my arms. And more and more, I'm feeling this emptiness. And, and this fear that if we don't do something soon, if we both don't, we're going to wake up and we're going to be 50 years old and we're going to regret this for the rest of our lives. Please, can we just talk to him? See what's involved. See if we even qualify. Just talk. Just talk. Doctor, we'll see you now. Come in. Come in, come in. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Bennett? May I call you Mary and uh, Greg? Sure. Please. Are you nervous? I bet you're nervous. Well, that's perfectly understandable. This is one of the most important decisions you're ever going to make. I'd be surprised if you weren't nervous. But I want you to relax, because I'm going to answer all your questions, whether you ask the right ones or not, OK? Now, the first question most people ask is, who is this Cecil Jacobson? Oh, that's OK, doctor. You come highly recommended. Well, that's flattering, Mary. But I want you and your husband to feel comfortable, confident. I'm a medical doctor and a geneticist. I taught obstetrics at George Washington University, and I served on two presidential commissions. On the personal side, I've been married for more than 20 years and have seven children of my own. Seven? You're Catholic. Mormon. Personally, I'd like some more, but my wife seems to think seven is enough. <laughs> and of course, I've made hundreds of babies. And that's what you are interested in, isn't it? Can we have a child? Well, I've looked over your record and yours, Greg, and the answer is of course you can. I have every confidence that we can beat those miscarriages. I knew it. And she'll be safe? Absolutely. Your irregular periods are associated with an ovulatory defect that can cause a problematic conception. And then later, a miscarriage. So, 
We determine when you're ovulating, and then we prevent the abnormal conception by the use of something called HCG. That's the natural hormone produced by women to sustain pregnancy. It's simple, really. So very simple. Question, Greg? How can you know all this? I mean, you haven't even examined her. And I'm not going to. I'm not the primary physician. Her OBGYN will do any examining necessary. Well, then how can you be sure she'll be okay? Craig, none of this is going to happen today or even tomorrow. It will take us a while to develop a clinical profile of Mary's reproductive cycle. I don't mean to be blunt, but uh, how much does all this cost? I think you'll find my fees are quite reasonable, especially once you hold your baby in your arms. These are temperature charts. I want you to record your temperature every day when you wake up. Every day, without fail. And I want you to record the conditions, too. Uh, if you have sex the night before, if you go out, drink anything, believe me, if there are any problems, we'll find them. And then, when we can reliably detect the onset of ovulation, we'll perform the insemination. Which brings us to you. Now, from these reports, it looks like we won't be able to use your sperm. I figured that. I guess all I want to know is, um, where do you get it from? I mean, who? From donors. Uh, hospitals and sperm banks only provide frozen sperm. Uh, imagine fresh vegetables, and you know how nutritious they are. Well, fresh sperm is much more effective. That's why I bring my donors here. Here? I thought all this was confidential. Oh, it is. Please don't worry. When Mary's in her treatment room, I meet them elsewhere and pay them the $20 donor fee uh, in cash to prevent a paper trail and then collect the specimen. You know these, uh, these? Very well. I realize that a sperm bank may seem safer, but in my experience, with the care that we must take about disease, I feel more confident using men I know and trust. How many times do you use them? I mean, is there any chance of, you know, incest or anything? No, no, no. I only use each donor two or three times. And in any event, any chance of consanguinity in this case, marriage between donor children, it's insignificant, statistically speaking. Besides, the donor that I'd use for you is not from this area. I'll be the only one who knows who he is. You know, Greg, when you came through that door, I thought, I have the perfect match. What's he like? Does he have kids? Indeed he does. And, of course, he's disease-free. He's a family man with children, a medical student, uh, religious, has an inclination for music, and, uh, oh, yes, a very definite aptitude for math. He sounds wonderful. Honey? Excuse me, have I misunderstood? You did come in to consult about an insemination. Yes. To consult. I see. Is there any more I can tell you? I don't think so. When you're ready, give me a call. We will. I can't stand the thought of someone else's sperm inside you. That's it. Then maybe you shouldn't have had the vasectomy. Well, how many times do I gotta apologize? The doctor said he could reverse it. Is it my fault it didn't work? Come on, Mayor. Is it really that bad? Huh? Just the two of us? Maybe not for you. You know, you keep saying that you're worried about my physical health. Well, what about my emotional health? Do you like living with a woman who gets tears in her eyes every time she sees little kids? Greg, this is killing me. I don't want to babysit other people's children and pretend that they're mine. I want a baby. From some other guy's sperm? The kid wouldn't even be mine. No. 
It'll be ours. Being a father isn't just about where the sperm came from. Come on, Mare. I am not ready for this. Will you ever be? You know, the more you resist having a baby, our baby, the more I start to wonder. Do you really want kids? You know I do. Well, then act like it. Honey, I don't want to force you. This is something I want us to do together. Yeah, well. You know what? Just don't expect me to be there holding your hand. Come on, what's your name? You know those guys in high school who are always so intent to get your bra on hooked, they start to pant. Oh, oh he's not that weird. <laughs> is he? No. <laughs> Don't mind being inseminated by a heavy breather. I was almost inseminated once by a heavy breather. What? what happened? He hyperventilated. Seriously. We were in the back seat. He passed out. Had to put a paper bag over his head just to revive him. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> I did it. Oh, oh, oh. So? Sorry. When's your appointment? Uh, next week. Six days. So Greg's okay with it? Mm, he will be. You nervous? Yeah. Hey, how are you feeling? No period yet. How long's it been? 32 days. Then maybe? <laughs> maybe. How can you stand the suspense? You know something? Thank you. Thank you. How many minutes? One. Just one? Yeah. That's still clear. Maybe it won't change color if we're watching. Mary's right. We have to stop staring. Anybody thirsty? Come on, you guys. Okay, okay, go, 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 go. Well, how long can we keep this up? My eyeballs are icing over. <laughs> <laughs> this is silly. So look. Mary. Blue, 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 blue. Well, got any champagne? It's blue? It's blue. Blue? <laughs> blue. for the donor? <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, now, are we relaxed? I hope so. Now, as you know, the first time we usually don't get a baby. Statistically, the third insemination seems to be the most successful. I don't know why. Perhaps the mother is nervous. Who, me? <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. Any questions? Um, no. All right. Well, I'll go meet the donor, and then I'll come back and I'll do the insemination. And tonight, don't forget, make love with your husband. Now try and relax.
Jacobson's name. How old is he here? Twelve weeks. See? There's his head and his little arm. <laughs> I'm jealous. It'll happen. Don't you get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hey. What do you think? Looks great. You know, I promised myself I was not going to buy any maternity clothes until I was absolutely sure. You're 13 weeks. Oh, I know. I just don't want to jinx myself by getting overconfident like I did the last time. Try it on. Okay, you convince me. <laughs> so how's Greg doing? Okay, I guess. Well, what does he say? Well, he knows that I'm going to see Dr. J, but it's sort of out of sight, out of mind, you know? Isn't it hard for you? Sometimes. Most of the time, really. I mean, I guess I just have to keep reminding myself how he feels about the baby not being his and how his mom would feel if she knew. Sue? 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 Can you take me to the doctor? What is it? Oh, this can't happen again. What? I'm bleeding. When we get there, would you call Bill? I will. Uh, don't leave a message if he's not there. I don't want to panic him. I think he'll be okay. I'm so glad you're with me. Sue, are you sure you don't want to go see Dr. Jacobs? Dr. Mason's been my gynecologist for years. Besides, his office is a lot closer. But Sue, Dr. Mary, please. Oh, Mary. She's inside room uh, three. Oh, right, right. Uh, thanks. I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. Although, if the spotting recurs, I want to see it. Believe me, you will. Yeah. You okay? Uh -huh. yeah. No. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah. Thank God. All right, let me just listen here for a moment. What do you hear? How far along are you? Thirteen weeks. Why? Well, there's nothing to be alarmed about. What? Well, we often don't hear the fetal heartbeat at this stage. You don't hear anything? Sue, please, relax. The next time Dr. Jacobson does an ultrasound, just have him count the heartbeats for you. Doctor, the Castellanos are in two. <sighs> Prepare this, please. There's Junior, do you see? Um, can you see, honey? No, I'm not sure. Well, I can see the baby's head and an arm. It looks like he's sucking his thumb. He? <laughs> Educated guess. <laughs> uh, there. Oh, I, I think so, but see, I'm not sure. Shall we count the heartbeats? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see the pulse? Beat, 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 beat. Beat, 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 beat. Beat, 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 beat. beat. I beat, see beat, it. Beat, beat. <laughs> now I see it. There. Don't you see it, honey? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see it. I see it. Uh, can we have another picture? My pleasure. Will you turn on the light? All right, sure. Yeah, feel better? <laughs> Thank you. Now, there's just one other thing we need to talk about. When shall we schedule an amniocentesis? Oh, what for? Just precautionary. The ultrasound doesn't tell us all we need to know. With an amnio, we'll be sure that everything's all right. Let us talk about it. Sue, 
It's your body. Now, I don't think there's any appreciable risk. Jacobson's certainly an expert in the amnio procedure. But unless you're prepared to abort if there's a problem. No. Well, then I don't think there's much point. So, shall we eavesdrop? Can you hear him? You say you saw the heartbeat. Hmm. Sure. I mean, it was right up on the monitor. I mean, he, well, he beat it out. It was like beat, 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 beat. You don't hear anything? If I refer you, will you see an independent ultrasound specialist? When? Tomorrow. Today. How are we feeling? Fine. I've been gaining some weight, but then I've been eating more, too. Anxiety. Yeah, the only thing worse than waiting to conceive is waiting to give birth. But ACG improves our odds. <laughs> See you next week? You can count on it. There. See? What did you say you were here for? Well, we didn't. What do you see? Well, frankly, nothing. No obstacles in the intestines or other organs. Of course, it would help if I knew what I was supposed to be looking for. She's pregnant. There. See? Now, there's the baby. And there's his head. There's an arm. And if you just look, you, you can count the heartbeats. There, see? That's the large bowel. And as far as I can see, this is fecal matter. A mistake. Look, look. I mean, I've even got, we've got pictures. This man is the best ultrasound specialist I know. And I'm sorry. As far as he can tell, you have never been pregnant. Oh, come on, that's ridiculous. Look at her. Maybe I'm not now, but nobody can tell me I wasn't. I know. No. Is Dr. Jacobson still prescribing HCG? Yes. To support the pregnancy. Why? I assume he... Look, there's something I think you need to know. HCG has been known to cause a false positive test. And it can mimic many other symptoms of pregnancy, such as bloating, weight gain. Do you mean... That there are other people like us? There have been stories. Oh. Now, the way I see it, you can proceed in a number of ways. You can 
simply not go back to Dr. Jacobson, or you can go back to him, tell him what happened. Or we can go back as if nothing's happened. Why would we want to do that? To see what he says. You are very good for my statistics, madam. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> You're absolutely glowing. <laughs> pregnancy agrees with you, Mary. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Mary Bennett, our newest mother in waiting. Congratulations. Jake, it's Mayor. Is Greg there? Oh. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll talk to him later. Thanks. Bye. Hi, Mary. It's Sue. I'm sorry I haven't been returning your calls, but... Um... I don't know what to say. I... Call me. I need to talk to you. Bye. Hi. Hi. Oh, Mary. Congratulations. I wasn't going to tell you. I wasn't even sure I should come by considering how you're feeling and all. Come on in. I just felt you should know. Especially now, before you tell Greg. About the baby. But I saw my test. I saw my test, too. But Dr. Mason said that the HCG can make it seem like you're pregnant. Have you been feeling bloated? Some. Gaining weight? Some. Sure. <laughs> it's normal, isn't it? Mary, if I wasn't pregnant, and Dr. J has been telling me I am and making it seem that way, too, by giving me HCG... See? Why would he do that? Mary, please don't misunderstand. All I'm saying is... We're friends, and I just want you to know, okay? So that you can be aware. Be sure. I am sure. You're sure you're not pregnant? According to the doctors, not ever. What? <laughs> Even now, after everything we've been told, I'm still hoping we'll go to Dr. Jacobson's office and discover that he's the one who's right and all the other experts are wrong. All right, let's see how Junior is doing today. Bill, would you get the lights, please? Yes, sir, there he is. Bigger and more active than ever. Shall we count the heartbeats? One, two, three, four, five, six. Beat, 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 beat. Beat, 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 beat. <laughs> oh, did you feel that? Well, probably not. Needs to be just a bit bigger before you can feel a little kick like that. Bill? Doctor, we need to talk. Certainly. Doctor, I might as well, I might as well put this to you straight. By all means. We've been told Sue's not pregnant. Not pregnant? Who on earth could have told you that? An independent ultrasound specialist. Confirmed by Dr. Mason. Huh. Well, I don't see how they could have come to that conclusion. I mean, you saw it for yourself. We saw shapes. You said we're a baby. Come on, Bill. I mean, you were a biology major in college. You know what a fetus looks like. All right, if it'll make you feel better, we can take another look. 
Couldn't you tell more with an internal exam? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that... I suppose if you're willing to wait while I do an insemination... We'll wait. I just don't know. Bill? What is it? If you don't mind, I'd like to take another look at the ultrasound. Fine. Sure. I see fetal matter. There definitely was a fetus. Was? Well, what about the internal exam? Oh, it's equivocal. And what does that mean? Well, there's certainly evidence of a pregnancy, but I'm afraid that I, just now I, I can't find the baby. Oh, God. But it was there an hour ago. Perhaps it was, perhaps it wasn't. Uh, See, this equipment, it isn't exact. You know, with all due respect, Doctor, you were just counting Junior's heartbeat and you were watching him kick, and now all you can see is fetal matter. Yes. It's very confusing, but not without precedent. I know this must be very distressing to both of you. Was there a baby, Doctor? Of course there was a baby. You can see the little arm, his little head. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to this, for this to be distressing to you or causing more injury. I just wanted to show you that it was like last time and the fetus is being reabsorbed. For almost 14 weeks? Of course, just like a bruise. A bruise? Yeah, I've got to be kidding. Bill, Sue, now I know you find this distressing. Please, Please. just spare us the speech about the no more bruises. Sue! We are going to get him. If he thinks that he is going to get away with this, Sue, I mean, I swear to God, no matter how much it costs, no matter how long it takes, that man, he is going to pay. Darling? Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> when I think what he has put you through, and who would do something like that? He calls himself a doctor. I am going to hire the best malpractice attorney in the state of Virginia. I know how you feel. After my miscarriages... It wasn't a miscarriage. I'm sorry. Sue, I'm pregnant, for sure. I'm glad. I'm having morning sickness and everything. Mary, you don't have to convince me. I asked to come over to see if you can use these maternity clothes. <sighs> this will save a lot of money. I, I don't know what to say. Thanks. Oh, um, and, uh, here's this. <laughs> oh, I am glad. 
glad to see you happy. I am. I really am. So, what did Greg say? I haven't told him yet. Sue, if it wasn't a miscarriage, then what was it? It wasn't a miscarriage, Mary, because I wasn't pregnant. And when we went back to Jacobson and told him that an ultrasound specialist said, and Dr. Mason confirmed that I wasn't pregnant, all of a sudden he couldn't see the baby anymore. He must have made a mistake. Of course he made a mistake. Maybe he made a mistake with you too, Mary. Maybe you're not pregnant either. I'm sorry, I don't mean to upset you. I just don't want him to do to you what he did to me twice. Sue. You've been a good friend to me. And I realize that you're upset and all. But all this talk, all this emotion and doubt, it just can't be good for me or for the baby. It's OK. I understand. I feel like a bad friend. I wish I could tell you I feel differently, but I don't. I wish I could tell you I trust him. I don't expect that. But I do. Before you start celebrating, before you tell Greg, please, get a second opinion. And if everything turns out all right, and I really hope it does, I really do, send me an announcement. Now, I know it's upsetting when something like this happens, especially to a friend, but you've got to remember that every case is different. Now, if you just have a little faith and patience, pretty soon you and your baby are going to be right there along with all my other success stories. <laughs> Thanks, doctor. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Oh, no bother. No, please. Positive thoughts. Let me help you to the door. Thank you. Bye, Mom. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> step. And step. Okay. And last two. Yes, step. that's right. And step. Step. All right, where now? We're in the living room. Yes, we are. <laughs> Come on, Mara, what are we doing? Just a sec, okay? It'll be worth it, I promise. All right, now, sit down. There you go. Ta-da! Whoa, what's all this? Read the card. Mrs. Gregory James Bennett is pleased to announce that she is expecting. Really? Oh my God, Mayor. I don't know what to say. Do you still love me? Yeah. Even though I kind of pushed you into this? Yeah. And you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy. <laughs> are you okay? I'm fine. We both are. Oh, Bob, look at you. <laughs> Wait, wait. What are you doing? Wait. Where are you going? Hi, Rose. Greg has something he wants to tell you. Mom, Mare's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, how far along? Oh, uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah, she's feeling great. You're feeling okay, right? I feel fine, really she fine. Feels, she feels fine, <laughs> Mom. Yeah. Mom, I'm going to have to call you tomorrow. All right. Good. I can see the baby's hair. Now, Mary, push. Push me. Come on, baby. Come on. And push. <laughs> Stop pushing, stop pushing, Mary. Good. The baby's headed out. Now, put a suction to the baby's 
Don't push, Mary. Hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Mary, baby's nose. Okay, okay, now, Mary, I want you to give me just a little push, okay? And push. Good. And stop. Oh, yeah. Oh, It's a boy. Is he okay? He's a ten. It's a boy. 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 It's a Hey, son. You're all right. Done everything. I love you too. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah. Like father, like son. <laughs> Guy, but you gotta wear it. Mom doesn't make me. Oh, there, big guy. You must be talking about some other mom. <clears throat> you remember why you gotta wear it? Because I got strab strab. Strabismus, that's right. And if you want Mr. Lazy Eye to learn to do his share of the work, you gotta be a pirate for a while. Did you have to be a pirate? When I was little? Nope, but I had to wear braces. Well, I have to wear braces? Oh, please, God, no. Oh. Only if you're lucky. And then you get to be a pirate with a metal mouth. Yeah! Ah! <laughs> oh, Greg, don't get him going. Get him going. Get him going. He's the one who's got me going. Oh, no. Body slam. Uh, He's down for the count. Pinned. One, one two, two, three. Yes. Oh, speaking of counts, Jesse, why don't you show your dad your math? Okay. Uh. Ms. Marsden says he's gifted. Oh, like mother, like son. <laughs> <laughs> Math? He didn't get it from me. Mm -hmm. That's why we felt we had no choice but to uh, come forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was today that Dr. Jacobson appeared for the first time before the state medical board to answer charges of fraud brought by former patients. Greg? Dr. Jacobson and his attorney refused to answer any questions. Oh, Greg! What? The case Look, of the Sue and Bill were on the television. You remember Sue? She's the one who gave Jesse the kangaroo. I haven't spoken to her in five years. She didn't even call me when Jesse was born. Does the hormone HCG create a false pregnancy as Dr. Jacobson's patients are claiming? To test this, I volunteered to take a series of HCG shots. And then, a few days later, using an ordinary pregnancy kit, like the kind you might use at home, we discovered... Congratulations. You're pregnant. What are they talking about? Here's my math. All right, let's see. What do we got? Wrong? Wrong? I just can't believe it. How could they do something like that? Mayor who? Is doing one what? Sue and Bill, they're accusing Dr. Jacobson, and all because they couldn't have a baby, and they're looking for someone to blame. Mm, that is something, though, getting that guy pregnant. <laughs> Greg, he gave us Jesse. Yes, I need the number, please, for a Dr. Cecil Jacobson. J-A-C-O-B-S-O-N. Well, maybe it's new or enlisted. Are you sure? Thank you.
May I help you? Yes, I'm looking for a Dr. Cecil Jacobson. Didn't this used to be his office? Yes, but not for the past year or so. Well, can you tell me where I might find him? No, I'm sorry, I can't. I think he's moved his practice to Utah. Though you might try the medical board hearings in Richmond. From what they say on TV. I've been trying to get in touch with you. I just wanted to let you know that I support you. How much money did you make? Dr. Jacobson, why did you do it? Are you not making a damn false statement to the media? Sue? Mary? Um, Bill, you remember Mary Bennett? Oh, hi. hi. Sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. We appreciate the support. Uh, I think she's here for Jacobson. After what he did for me, I have to be. Yeah, well, we've got some seats waiting. You. You're wrong, you know. Here's the proof. Sue, I'm telling you, you do not need this. It'll be all right. Give my seat. Oh, it's a fine little boy. But the good Jacobson may have done for a few can't offset the pain he caused the rest of us. What did he do that was so wrong? He lied. Well, he didn't lie to me. He told me that I would have a baby, and I did. He also said that if things didn't work out, no boo-hoos. Remember that? Oh, how could I forget? Sue, he did the best that he could. Okay, so maybe sometimes things didn't turn out so perfect, like Jesse's got strabismus, lazy eye. But that's no reason to blame him. Mary, did you happen to notice the other children that had eye patches? No, what about? Well, there have been rumors. About what? The baby maker. <laughs> well, tell me, Dr. Jacobson, what is your success rate for patients who've been injected with HCG? To date on the cases that have needed HCG for induction of ovulation, our pregnancy rates are better than 50%. And better than half of those come to term. So you're saying that 25% of your patients conceived and carried to term? Yes. That's very impressive, doctor. What you're seeing is Dr. Jacobson, who after three days of hearings, voluntarily surrendered his license to practice medicine in the state of Virginia. And in further developments, in the case of the doctor who calls himself the baby maker, a surprise revelation today from the United States attorney. It is alleged that Dr. Jacobson may also have used his own sperm for the purposes of artificial insemination. That's a lie! All these accusations are false. My donor program is a matter of record, but it's confidential and will stay that way as I promised my patients. Are you willing to... Uh, excuse me, please. Excuse me. You believe that guy? He didn't do anything. Well, then how come they took away his license? They didn't. He gave it up. You heard, voluntarily. Hey, fine. Whatever. Uh, mm. Honey... Mayor, come on. Will you forget about it? How? How am I supposed to forget about it, but... What? There were two kids at the hearing that day with eye patches. So? I never saw the donor. Yeah, but the nurses did, right? Look, Mayor, come on. You're the one defending the guy, remember? Yeah, but maybe that's because I want to believe him. But he w won't talk to me. He moved away. A and you're right. Why would he give up his license unless he was... Mayor, stop. No. I gotta know if he did it. And then what? Huh? What, what if you find out he's as bad as they say? You're gonna go public with Jesse over my dead body? You're wrong about this, Mayor. And if you're not gonna protect our son, I sure as hell am. Okay, okay. Okay, here's the deal. Once I find out if Jacobson was the donor, that's it. Okay? Promise? 
Promise. This is Bennett, Peter Fowler, U.S. Attorney. Hi. First, let me tell you how much we appreciate your willingness to testify. The fact that you've come forward voluntarily... Hey, excuse me, testify? I only came here because I heard you could give me some information. I see. And what kind of information are you looking for? About Dr. Jacobson, his insemination program. Were you one of his patients? Mrs. Bennett, if you're not willing to testify, nobody's going to force you to. Yes, I was his patient about six years ago. About six years. <laughs> Somehow, we missed you. There are others like me. Like you how, Mrs. Bennett? Mrs. Bennett... We're involved in a very complicated legal case here. I'm afraid I can't give you any more information than I could give to anybody else. Now, if you have some questions about the doctor's insemination program, why not just ask him? Well, I tried, but no one would talk to me. You know, it wasn't easy for me coming here feeling the way I do about Dr. Jacobson. And how's that? He gave us a miracle, our son. Can you prove that he did those things? Used his own sperm? Mrs. Bennett, if you have some concerns about your son's paternity, it's easily confirmed. How? With a DNA test. All right. Ready? Gotta decide. No, we don't. Craig, think. What if later on Jesse gets some sort of a disease that we could have prevented if we'd known more about the donor? Like the strabismus, only worse. Do you know about all the diseases your parents had? No. Well, then that... maybe the lazy eye came from your side of the family. Maybe even if we find out who the donor is, you still won't know anything about the guy's background. We've got to be sure. We owe it to Jesse. Jesse? Jesse? Okay. Okay. To all of us. You've been violated, too. First of all, you don't know that's what happened. Well, that's why all, the test is important. Second of all, will you listen? Even if that's what did happen, are your feelings more important than protecting Jesse? Now, can we just enjoy this party, please?
Thanks for being willing to talk. I'm glad you called. I wasn't sure you still lived here. Can't really afford to move. Lawyer's fees. And, of course, we're still trying to get pregnant. Has it worked? No. But then I've never been falsely pregnant again, either. You're sure he did it, aren't you? I'm sure what he did to me. For your sake, I hope I'm wrong about you. Oh, me too. Mary, do you really want to know? If I don't find out and something happens to Jesse, I... Then if I do find out and it changes the way Greg feels about him... Mary, how... how do you feel? When I think about Dr. Jacobson and his... dim lights and his soft music and telling me to have sex with my husband... I don't know if I can live with this. Then what choice do you have? I told you, the doctors need to check your blood to find out why you've been getting so many colds. What? What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing, sweetheart. Mommy's just tired, that's all. Okay? Hey, you guys, take it easy. This is Coyote Ray, your man, DJ, saying Cecil, Cecil, Cecil. You a bad boy. They're going to put you on trial for what those women say you did. <laughs> Cecil, for real, feel good, doctor. Baby, let me examine you. Oh, doctor, are you in? In a minute. Yes, hi. This is Mary Bennett. I'm calling for the results of my son Jesse's blood test. Okay. Yes. Yes, I understand. Probably would have gone back for more, right? Hey, Coyote Ray, what's on your mind? Yeah, I'm one of the parents he robbed, okay? First of all, Dr. Jacobson was never medically screened for health problems, and my child has health problems. And second, he fathered a lot of kids. That's for sure, like uh, maybe 75. So? So? What am I supposed to do when my child brings home a date? Ask if they're the product of artificial insemination? I gotta admit, I never thought of that. Well, I think about it. Okay, lady. The man may be a medical genius, but he was thoughtless and cruel and just plain stupid. Okay, lady. You made your point. Yeah, mister, but did you get it? The radio. The radio, for God's sake. I said I was sorry. You just couldn't let it alone, could you? You just couldn't let it alone. Okay, well, that's it. You found out what you wanted to know. It's over. It can't be. You promised. He raped me. Raped you? Raped you? You were the one who went to him. What are you saying? Then it's my fault? I am the no, victim. But... Now, maybe if you had been there, well, you'd know... Well, that's crap. What... Oh, really? 
Never having to face reality, Greg. Going around bragging, this is my son, like he was the result of some sort of immaculate conception. Is it better now that every time I look at him, I gotta see Jacobson's face? Huh? Then now I gotta imagine that fat pig in you. I don't have to imagine. I was there, remember? I was the one lying flat on my back, smelling his breath while he put a piece of himself inside of me without my knowledge, without my consent. All right, all right, maybe he didn't force me, but he did trick me like, like I was some 12 year old girl and he was some dirty old man saying, come here, sweetie, let Uncle Cecil make you feel good. So what is this? Mary the Avenger? Revenge has got nothing to do with it. Well, let somebody else testify. There are plenty of other women. I can't. Even if it hurts Jesse. It won't. And you can guarantee that. I will be testifying in disguise. No one will know no. it's me. Greg, will you please try and understand? This man knew that we were desperate. All right. I was desperate. He used my hopes and my dreams and my body. Do you have any idea what that feels like? I said no. Greg! Mayor, you, you have had it your way right from the start. First, it was having a baby even if you could die. Then it was finding out the truth for Jesse's sake. Now it's testifying against Jacobson, no matter who it hurts. Remember when you said, if we didn't have a baby, we'd regret it? Well, this too, Mayor. You're gonna regret this too. his eyes exactly the way I'm looking into yours and then I want to ask him how could you do this to me to you as God is my witness I never willingly lied to my patients gee who was that fat man someone should really make a movie about this guy <laughs> yeah I'd love to see it they could call it the sperminator <laughs> I'm sorry gallows humor Another sound bite. I knew that my sperm was safe because I haven't slept with anyone but my wife for the last 30 years. At this point, what good's monogamy if your genes are bad? Your son's got strabismus. I, he had to wear an eye patch. Do you have a picture? Yeah. Oh, how cute. Do you have one without the patch? They look like brother and sister. They are brother and sister. So, does this make us in-laws? What makes a man so sick? Mrs. Smith, was there ever any discussion with Dr. Jacobson about mixing your husband's sperm with the sperm of a donor and then inseminating you with it? No. We never would have allowed it. We'd have been out of his office in about half a second. What else were you concerned about, Mrs. Black? We were concerned about several things. 
one of which was whether or not our child would have the same father as our neighbor's child. And what did Dr. Jacobson tell you? I remember he said there would be around 50 donors who would be either medical or seminary students, and he would be able to choose from this large group to match my husband's characteristics. Mr. Black, did there come a time after the birth of your child that you decided to again use artificial insemination to have another? Yes, we did. Now, with regards to that child, did you and your wife ever discuss whether or not you wanted to use the same donor that you had used for child number one? Yes, because our first child has some medical problems, we decided it would be best to use a different donor. So some of these medical problems were hereditary? Yes, hereditary. Mrs. Castellano, why didn't you have a DNC? Because Dr. Mason, my OBGYN, and an ultrasound specialist both said my womb was empty and of normal size. So in other words, you didn't need a DNC because you weren't pregnant. Exactly. And I'd never been pregnant. Now then, uh, Mrs. Jones, when Dr. Jacobson told you he had a perfect match for your husband, what did you understand that to mean? My husband is Irish, about 5'10", muscular, 180 pounds. <laughs> I see. You assumed that Dr. Jacobson meant a match of physical appearance? Um, Mrs. Jones? Yes, he did. And yet you testified that what he told you was that the donor was a student of medicine, he was a religious married man with children, had an aptitude for music and math, and uh, disease-free sperm. That's what he told you, wasn't it? Yes, but he... Thank you. And isn't it true that if you hadn't been told that Dr. Jacobson might be the father of your child... He is not his father. My husband is his father. My point exactly. And if the government hadn't violated patient confidentiality, since Dr. Jacobson kept his word, Kept his donor's secret. No disguises would be necessary. Neither would this trial, would it? No further questions. Redirect. <laughs> Mrs. Jones, Mr. Kane has tried to suggest that the identity of the donor doesn't matter. So let me ask you again. Assuming that Dr. Jacobson used his own sperm, do you believe that he lied to you? Yes, he lied to me. And did he lie to you about something that's very important to you? One of the most important decisions of my life and my marriage. And if you and your husband had known that Dr. Jacobson intended to inseminate you with his own sperm, would you have agreed? No, absolutely not. No further questions. I love my son, no matter who he came from. Mrs. Jones. This man, Your Honor, this doctor, Mrs. Jones. not only violated my body, but he violated my hopes and my dreams and my trust. Mrs. Jones, you may step down. Mrs. Carruthers, when you worked at Dr. Jacobson's office, did he develop a routine when sperm donors came in? I would observe him returning with a specimen from the bathroom, usually at three or four in the afternoon. Martins are waiting. Thank you. Dr. Jacobson? Hmm? 
So it was your responsibility to handle the sperm samples for Dr. Jacobson, is that correct? Yes, sir. And what, if anything, did you observe in the course of your work? Well, I remember one day, not long after I went to work there. This is a semen sample? Of course, from today's donor. Today's? I didn't see anyone. And you won't. In this practice, I'm the only one who deals with the donors. Yes, sir. I realize you're new here, but you must realize that my patients are guaranteed anonymity. And that's what they get. Yes, sir. <laughs> In certain very isolated circumstances, when a donor didn't show up and we had a patient ready for insemination, yes, yeah, sometimes I use my own sperm. But if I had any idea there'd be such an outcry against a doctor being a donor, which is such a common practice, I'd have told my patients to go somewhere else. Dr. Jacobson, according to the Roche Biomedical Laboratories of the 18 children DNA tested, in 16 of them, the probability of your paternity was 99.99%. I do not accept those findings. If it is in fact true, wouldn't that suggest that you made routine use of your own sperm? It is neither a fact, nor is it true. Dr. Jacobson, Mary Jones and others have testified that you told them that each donor would be used with two or three children. Would that be an inaccurate statement on your part? I am not, I repeat, not the father of that woman's child. At the record, note that Dr. Jacobson is present along with this council, as well as the government's council. This case has aroused a lot of interest in the public and among those present here. But I don't want any signs of approval or disapproval by anybody in this court. So we'll go ahead and bring the jury in. Have the members of the jury reached their verdict? Yes, we have. The clerk will read it. The defendant will please stand and face the jury. Criminal case 91474A, United States of America versus Cecil Jacobson. We, the jury, find the defendant, Cecil Jacobson, guilty as to count one, guilty as to count two, guilty as to count three, guilty as to count four, guilty as to count five. Guilty as to count six. And this just in, this afternoon in federal court, Dr. Cecil Jacobson, also known as the baby maker, was found guilty on all counts. Sentencing is expected to take place in two weeks. Congratulations. Thanks. Where's Jess? Putting on his jammies. Mayor. Look, um, you did what you had to do. And maybe I didn't agree. And I know maybe I haven't been there for you as much as I could have been. It's been hard for all of us. But uh, now that it's over. Is it? Over? As long as you don't go on Oprah. This is going to be with us the rest of our lives. What do you mean? Like, what do we tell Jesse? Nothing. Why do we got to tell him anything? Because he's a smart kid and he's going to grow up to be an intelligent man who has a right to know. So he'll be able to make decisions about his own life. Mayor, he's five years old. You think we could wait a couple of years? 
I don't want to live like this anymore. Mad at each other. Hi, Mom. Hi, baby. Come here. can't figure out is why he did it. Thanks. <laughs> Money. Yeah, maybe it was what he did to you. <laughs> what other reason would there be for faking a pregnancy? But with women like me, you know, I think that somewhere in his sick, twisted mind, he really thought he was helping us. Well, I guess we'll never really know. As long as he gets what he deserves. Can I have some sprinkles? No. Sure. <laughs> okay. You know where they are? Yep. So how are you and Greg? <clears throat> We're working on it. Yeah. Mrs. Castellano, can I have some cookies to go with my ice cream? Jesse, if your mom says it's okay. Mom, please. Don't look at me. I'm practicing spoiling. Okay, one. I'm pregnant. Absolutely, positively certain. <laughs> oh, Sue! Oh! <laughs> What's going on? <gasps> Come here. <laughs> well, in a few months, if I'm really, really lucky, I'm going to have a little boy just like you. Or a little girl just as strong and as brave as your mommy here. Now, can I have my maternity clothes back? <laughs> about that kangaroo? Oh. <laughs> Here. Okay, this is for you. 